your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Pastor McGovern asked me to preach Wednesday night. The Lord instantly laid this message on my heart. It's one I have preached before. And uh, it was, anyways, I'm going to preach it again this morning. I'm thinking specifically today about my mom and dad. And I want to preach on faithfulness today, just, just so you know. Faithfulness, and I appreciate their faithfulness, and uh, there's just a lot of thoughts that run through my head even just standing here looking at you guys, you know, so you bear with me if you will. I also want to say this morning, I got a chance to say hello to Brother and Mrs. Lynch back there, and they are the couple, they are, their vision for Cordova is uh, the reason that there's a church today planted in Cordova. About three years ago, I think they came here, and they wanted to see a church planted there, and the Lord did too, and so I appreciate uh, there you go, just some faithful people and, uh, and their testimony. But if you would, let's read 1 Corinthians 15, and it's going to be verse 58. You probably figured that if you know my dad. And then we'll pray and get into the message. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58, the Bible says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your word. And Holy Spirit, please, would you speak to our hearts today? And Lord Jesus, we want to glorify and honor you. And Holy Spirit, please, would you encourage our hearts and maybe convict us if that's what we need? We ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to preach this morning on the subject of faithfulness. And when I think of, of faithfulness, I think of many things, but I certainly think of my mom and my dad. Um, my dad was saved, and I'll maybe mention this just again if I remember, but my dad was saved when I was born, the year that I was born, 1976. This year I turned 40 in June, and they're getting ready to celebrate their 50th anniversary. And, you know, I remember the day it dawned on me, now wait a minute, you guys have been married longer than I've been alive. You know, that was just a, a revelation to me. And if you want to talk about why they're still married, you have to understand, probably it was in part because of myself. I was a very sensitive child. And even when I was a teenager, I, I wanted peace and, and, and harmony in the home. And if I ever sensed, and, and I could have been way off, but if I ever sensed that there was something maybe going on, I would say something like this, boy, I sure am glad there's no ill-mannered feelings between anybody today. And... Uh, and, uh, and then I would probe a little bit if I didn't get the, you know, what I needed for my security. I'd say, Dad, why don't you give Mom a kiss? <laughs> Mom, why don't you kiss Dad and, and such things? So, no, um, but they have just always been an example of faithfulness in their marriage and in their ministry, and I praise the Lord for that. I want to talk just four points about faithfulness this morning, and I want to start with uh, exalting the Lord Jesus Christ because he is why we're here today. I want you to look at this idea of faithfulness personified in the Lord Jesus Christ. Look, if you would, at Revelation chapter 19, faithfulness personified. You know, as I said before, um, I was born the year that my dad was saved. Now, my sisters are quite a bit older than I am, and uh, they're, they're, you know, I was born, dad was at Bible college, and the Bible says, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. And I was born right into a, a new home, if you will. My sisters were not. My sisters lived for, for some time uh, in the, that 10 years of marriage with a dad that was not saved. Uh, they lived with, within a home that God was not the centerpiece of the home. And if you talk to my mom and dad today, they'll tell you their home was about to come unraveled. It was unraveled. And it was about to end, and then Jesus came in. And so, regardless of, of what we say today about, about Pastor and Mrs. Roach and, and those things, listen, it's because of the Lord Jesus Christ that we can even be here. I understand there's folks who have been married and they don't know the Lord, and I commend them for their faithfulness in marriage, but what a sweet thing it is when God salvages not just a soul and a life, but an entire marriage. And so the Lord Jesus Christ is why we're here today. And uh, the old rugged cross made the difference and, and certainly changed our home. But in Revelation chapter 19, as John, there's an 
in, in chapter 19, there's the, a call to the marriage of the Lamb. But I want to get down to verse number 11. And John says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called. Now this is, this is actually a name. This is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful and true. The Bible says, And in righteousness he doth judge and make war, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Listen, we see two, if not three, names here of the Lord Jesus. It's not just as we, as we gather today and we say, well, here's a couple that have been faithful. The Lord Jesus Christ, he is faithful. That's his name. And listen, if you want to think about faithfulness, I, I, I praise the Lord that there's examples of faithfulness. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But listen, the Lord Jesus Christ, His name is faithful. He is constant. He is consistent. He is stable. He is steadfast. He is, he is forever. And so as we think about this, and maybe you're thinking, you know, what is the secret to a 50-year a marriage? I read an article last week about a couple that had been married for 68 years and they died within 20 minutes of each other, and they were both saved and loved the Lord. Very sweet testimony. What is the secret? Well, I'm here to tell you today, the secret is Jesus Christ. And if your marriage is centered around the one who is faithful, his name is faithful, and if he is your vision, well, your marriage is going to do quite well. In fact, it's going to thrive. Look, if you would, in Lamentations chapter 3. I think this morning, I don't see Starla here, but I... Uh, Starla Jordan's favorite song is Great is Thy Faithfulness. And I have a, I have a hard time sometimes just singing that song or, or thinking about that song without, you know, get a little emotional and think about the faithfulness of God. But I want you to consider God's faithfulness. Jeremiah was speaking here in Lamentation chapter 3. And in verse 22 he said, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. You know, you guys look great this morning. Everybody's dressed up, you're gussied up in your Sunday best, and you know, you're, you're looking good, but you do realize that we don't even deserve to be here. It, it is of the Lord's mercies that we have not been consumed, and it's because His compassions fail not. And then He goes on to say, They, His compassions, His mercy are new every morning. Great is Thy faithfulness. Great is Thy faithfulness. Listen, when we stop to to worship the Lord, and I hope that's, that's on your heart today, thanking God just for who He is, praising God just for who He is. Yes, there's time to, to praise God for what He's done and thank Him for what He's done, but just stopping and thinking uh, who He is, I want you to consider He's faithful. That's His name. That's His character. That's who He is. And if it wasn't for His faithfulness, as I said before, you and I would not be here. Great is Thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow. Not even a shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Summer and winter and moon time and, and, and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above, join with all nature and manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. You know, when you're raking your leaves here in a couple weeks, God is faithful. When you're scraping the ice off your windshield in a couple months, God is faithful. When you're shoveling snow, playing in the snow in, in three months, God is faithful. When you're kicking your mud boots off in the entryway in the spring, God is faithful. When you're cutting your grass next summer, it's because of God's faithfulness. And so as we think about faithfulness, let's think about the Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 36, 5, we see thy faithfulness reacheth unto the clouds. First Thessalonians 5, 24, we see... Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. You know, you think about the call of God on your life, and you might be here this morning and say, boy, I feel like there's a call, but I just don't feel like I'm capable or, or worthy. Or, and, and, and that may be true. That is true, in fact. But don't worry about that because he's faithful to not only call you, but he's also going to perform that. He's faithful. 2 Thessalonians 3.3, the Bible says, The Lord is faithful who shall establish you. Are you established today? Is your life established and settled? Well. God can do that for you. 2 Timothy 2, 3, the Bible speaks about our lack of faith. And if we deny him, he cannot deny himself. And then it says, yet he abideth faithful. You know, God's faithfulness is not contingent upon my ability to have great faith myself. 
God's faithfulness is not contingent upon me even believe that, believing that He is and that He's a reward of them that diligently seek Him. Whether I believe or you believe or we do not, God is still faithful. He cannot deny Himself. Hebrews 2.17, we see that He's a faithful high priest. Hebrews 4.15 and 16 talks about that high priest. And the very reason that we can go to the throne of grace and find mercy is because of His faithfulness. Hebrews 11.11, 11, the Bible says He is faithful that promised. What kind of a promise from God do you need today? Maybe there's a promise that you know about, but you're still a little shaky on the whole idea because you just don't think about the faithfulness of God. He's faithful that promised. 1 Peter 4.19, the Bible reminds us as, as unto a faithful creator. 1 John 1.9, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And on and on the list goes of the verses that describe the faithfulness of God. Listen, simply put, if you want to be like Jesus, be faithful. And if you're here this morning and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, He's what you need today. You say, well, my life seems like it's pretty put together and I think things are, are going fine. Listen, that, that, you may think that and that might be where, where your mind act, what your mind actually believes. But if you don't have the Lord Jesus Christ, you really don't have anything. And you'll cruise through life just a little bit longer, but there's going to come a time when you're going to draw that last breath in about two seconds, on the other side of death, you're going to figure out, I needed Jesus. A lot of things I didn't need, but I needed Jesus. But child of God, be faithful. Faithfulness personified. Secondly, I want to speak about faithfulness identified. Look, if you would, at 2 Timothy chapter 2, faithfulness identified. So, what does faithfulness look like? What does faithfulness look like? That's a good question. I think that's a fair question. <clears throat> in 2 Timothy chapter 2, Paul is speaking to Timothy, and he starts out in verse number 1, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. And then he goes on to encourage him in the to be a good soldier, but he told Timothy, the things that you've heard of me, I want you to take those and I want you to commit those to faithful men and then they'll be able to teach others also. So the question is, how do I know if somebody's faithful? Is, is it a badge you wear? You know, a badge that you kind of polish when you come to church on Sundays and it says, right there, it says, faithful. Is it something that I tell people? Is it something that I you know, I, I say, good morning, my name is Josh, and I'm faithful. How do I know, and, and you know, what, what do I know? How do I know? Well, look, if you would, at a couple things. First of all, Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs chapter 20. <clears throat> and uh, I want you to realize that faithfulness is not common. Faithfulness is not common. And we don't have, we, we don't have to look very far to, to, to realize that. I think... Uh, Mom, mom and dad were talking yesterday, they get their hometown paper, the Grafton paper, and they were looking at the, the, marriage, the number of marriages and the number of divorces, and I think uh, within the, the cycle, I think the paper comes out three, three times a week or something, there had been 36 marriages and 40 divorces, more divorces than marriages, and we know that if you look at statistics, but the Bible, the Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6, the, the Bible says most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. There's a lot of people out there that are saying, I'm faithful, and look at me, and look what I've done, and look how God has used me, and look at the abilities that I have, and, and I'm a, a great man of faith, and I'm faithful, and I'm this and that, but yet the Bible says a faithful man who can find. They're not just everywhere. And maybe you know that now, but maybe you're a bit naive and you think, man, everybody that's got a suit and tie on has got to be faithful. You know, everybody that I see singing the hymns that know the words by heart, they've got to be faithful. Well, that's not necessarily true. Flashy and faithful are usually not related. Usually they're not related. You know, we just got done traveling a little bit and preaching, and we were in a lot of different churches, saw a lot of different things. And it occurred to me, when I'm thinking about the faithful people, it occurred to me, you know, there's people in here that are faithful that nobody really even knows about. They're heroes of the faith, as we would call them. They're what we would call prayer warriors. They're all these things. There's faithful people here, 
and, and nobody knows it. Now, the pastor knows it, and, and, but, but no one else knows that. Listen, when I think about faithfulness, I think of a lot of things. I want to share some with you. Um, I think about the McGovern family. Twelve years in Papua New Guinea. Um, they went through things, and we've heard about some of the things, but they, they went through things that we don't understand. I've never been there. I can't even, I can't even say, oh, I understand that. I don't. I don't have any clue what they went through. I just imagine the worst. And I think, wow, that's absolutely incredible. I can remember many times getting a phone call. Dad, get a phone call. Uh, I get a phone call. Dad just been on the phone with Pastor McGovern. And Marianne's got malaria. Or Marianne called and Harry's got malaria. Or Levi's got malaria. One of the girls have got malaria. And they stayed, and they stayed, and they stayed. And they came back for a furlough and then went back, knowing, you know, the second time they knew what they were going back to, I think of faithfulness. But listen, there's another part of that, too. When we get those phone calls, I think of people in the church that went on their knees to pray. I, I know of people in the church that, that begin to fast one day, two days, three days, whatever, until we heard a different word that God had, had healed or that the fever had broken or whatever the case was. Listen, but it's all faithfulness. I think of Stan and Betty Roach, you know, coming to Alaska in 1979. Did you know that my mom spent at least the first 40 Christmases of her life at home with, with, her, with her mom and then dad? The first 40 Christmases, you know, and, and she was, uh, she, she loved her family. They, they left that, and they came to Alaska, and, and she got to go back a few times for Christmas to keep that 40 years going. But uh, they, they left that, and they came to Alaska and, and started a church over in, in Bill Surrey's home. And, you know, and, and just they've been attacked, and they've been lied about, and they've been stabbed in the back, and there's been trials and struggles and whatnot, but not just their marriage, but this church has survived those hard times. I think about faithfulness. But then I also think about people like the Sites and the Surrey family and the Butlers, and the Moffats, and the Wrights, and just everybody. I think about the Scalises. You know, they bug out of here as soon as church is over to go the, to the, to the uh, Native Hospital. And, and they don't sound a, an alarm as they're going out the door generally, and, and they're just faithful. Roy Butler's been cutting the grass. He's faithful. You guys are in the prison. You're faithful. There's many aspects to faithfulness, and many times Brother Penix goes up on that river and feeds the mosquitoes all summer long. He's a faithful man. Listen, and, and, and so many of you, just in your lives, in your families, in your ministries, you've been faithful, faithful, faithful. But we don't always see it, but God does. Faithfulness identifies. You know, stable children come from faithful homes. Faithful children come from faithful homes. You know, one thing I appreciate about the Lowe family, I know where they're sitting today, John and Margaret Lowe, I've known them since before I was a teenager. One thing I appreciate about them, you know, I don't know what all went on in their home. We got invited over for supper a handful of times maybe, and, and uh, yeah, the house was clean, everything looked good, everybody was on their best behavior, but Ruth, things just went on. But what I do know now, what was going on in that home, was there was some faithfulness. Because I see these kids, and they're stable, and they love God, and their kids, and their kids are in church. And so many times it takes some years till you start seeing faithfulness. The Thomas family. Just, just on and on we go. Many years ago, there was a fellow that came up with this line, you might be faithful, or you might be a redneck if, you know, if this happens or that happens. Well, let me give you some of these. You might be a faithful person if you've ever fallen asleep trying to have your devotions in the morning. Now, you might say, well, I'm not faithful because I don't feel like I've done anything, you know, that really is earth-shattering. I'm not faithful because I'm still raising my kids, and we're, we're yet to see. The jury's out on that one. And I don't feel like I'm faithful. Well, listen, you might be a faithful person. You might be faithful if you've ever had to have your wife drive to church on a Wednesday evening because you could not stay awake. You might be faithful if the newness of your ministry wore off 10 years ago. I said the newness wore off 10 years ago, but you're still in the ministry. You might be faithful if you've celebrated a 50th wedding anniversary or a 10 or a 20 or a 5. You, you might be a faithful person. You might be a faithful person if not one night of a revival or a missions conference is even considered optional. You're just going to go. You might be considered faithful if the blue-haired girl at the coffee shop, when you pull up, she just hands you the usual. I had to throw that in for John. But you might be faithful. Your friends and family, they don't invite you to things on a Friday night maybe because they know you're in two and four. They don't ask you over on a Tuesday night because they know that's prison night. 
Certainly, they're not going to ask you to do something on a Wednesday night because hopefully they'll be here with you in church. You might be faithful if you have not gotten anything out of the services for a long time because your kids are young and you're potty training them and you're, you know, maybe they're two years old and you, you spank their bottoms the entire time and you leave the church thinking, why did we even come? I don't know what he even preached on. But you keep coming. And you keep coming because it's right to do. Listen, it always, it, it, it's, it's, we, we obey, faith and then feelings. Faith and then blessings. It's faith first. It's not about what you feel like. You might be a faithful person if you would like to be noticed from time, and to, time to time. But if you're not, you'll still continue on. It, it doesn't matter. Even if you're not, you'll still continue on. Faithfulness personified, faithfulness identified. Thirdly, faithfulness that's challenged. Look, if you would, at Psalm chapter 12. It's a very pitiful verse here. I believe David was at a, a, a low spot in his life. I think he was looking for some encouragement. I, I know he was looking around him, and he says this in Psalm chapter 12, in verse 1, he says, help. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. David was asking God to help him. <laughs> he said, Lord, help, because the godly ceaseth. That means that there were those that he knew that were godly. They, they were godly people. They were doing something for the Lord. They were doing something right, and, but they've stopped. They've stopped doing that. And the faithful, they're failing from among the children of men. Listen, I think you and I can say the same thing today. Lord, help. We, we look around us and we see these people that used to be with us and they used to be faithful and they used to just live life. They love God. They love people. And today their, their lives are just a wreck and they're a mess. And we say, Lord, help. We hear about preachers that maybe they were faithful for 20 years or 30 years and then they kind of go off the deep end and we say, Lord, help. I'm, I'm discouraged. I look around and the faithful are failing. Why am I bringing this up? Because faithfulness, your faithfulness is going to be challenged. Listen, I promise you, within 50 years of marriage, there have been some personality conflicts. There have been times that they both thought they were each right, and somehow they had to get through it and, and, and come to an agreement or a compromise or something. But faithfulness is challenged. Well, what challenges our faith? Well, for me, it's my flesh. I'll just start right there. It's my flesh. My flesh is lazy, and yours is too. My flesh only wants to do what it feels like doing. My flesh would love to come to church if the weather's nice. Actually, if the weather's nice, my flesh would rather go fishing. My flesh would be here on a Wednesday night as long as we got that constant daylight, but when it starts getting dark, my flesh doesn't want to come to church in the dark. And is it snowing? Well, my flesh really doesn't want to come to church now. Uh, my flesh doesn't want to be faithful to the Bible reading, to prayer time. My flesh doesn't want to go knock on a complete stranger's door. Do you know those people? No, but we're about to meet them. You know, that's a little scary sometimes. My flesh doesn't want to do that. Listen, my flesh, and just on and on and on the list goes, my flesh fights faithfulness to do what I should do, but it's not just that, it's other Christians. Other Christians many times discourage my faithfulness. Chris, you ever been discouraged? <laughs> Over, over different things, but maybe you're in a ministry and, and people just are not able to do the ministry anymore, or maybe they just get tired and they quit, or maybe they even get redirected in some other way, but nonetheless, you're still short of man. Well, your faith gets challenged, doesn't it, by other Christians. Finances will challenge your faith. Well, I'm excited. It's October. It's missions conference time, and the missionary guy is right there, and I just saw those pictures, and I want to be a part of that, right? And I've got a little money in my pocket because Governor Walker didn't take it all. You know, I got a little dividend money, and life is good. And boy, we're going to give to missions this year, kids, and we're going to do it every month for this amount. And then June comes, or then, you know, uh, December comes, and it's time to buy the kids a Christmas gift. Finances will challenge your faithfulness. Your children will challenge your faithfulness. Listen, you know, children, and I am just trying to figure this whole thing out about raising these people that God gave me, but, you know, as your children get older and, and you're dealing with them and trying to help them through hard times, um, and it can be when they're younger too, but many times 
your children begin to challenge your faithfulness. Oh, you knew what was right. But now it's a bit more of a challenge. Or maybe they are just young and it's hard to bring them along sometimes. Listen, there's some things that will challenge our faithfulness. You're tired, you're sick, whatever. Your faithfulness is going to be challenged. But I want to finish with this. Your faithfulness will be rewarded. Faithfulness is personified in the Lord Jesus Christ. Faithfulness identified, and, and really just looking around, I, I just want you to realize there's examples of faithfulness right here in this church. Uh, there's examples of, examples of faithfulness in the Word of God. And we can get in the Word of God and we can see what is right, but many times we have to see an example of that for us to say, okay, that's what it means to do that for all those years. Faithfulness will be challenged, but lastly, faithfulness will be rewarded. Turn, if you would, to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, and this is where we want to get. Listen, your faithfulness will be rewarded. Well, yeah. If I stick it out for 50 years, you know, I'll get to set a service and have a meal in my honor. And, uh, and yeah, well, that's good too. There will certainly be those rewards along the way through life as you're faithful. And God will, will bless that faithfulness. And you'll, if you're in the ministry, you're going to see souls saved. And you're going to see fruit. You're raising a family. You're going to see those kids raised and they love the Lord and they have a heart for God and you're going to see those things. That's all fruit. But I want you to realize that there's coming a day that we're going to stand before the Lord and your faithfulness, maybe not seen by men, but your faithfulness will be rewarded. And by the way, only your faithfulness. I want you to, I want you to think with me about this. In Matthew chapter 25, we're a familiar passage of Scripture, verse 14, the Bible says, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants, and get this, delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Let's jump down to verse 19. The Bible says, And after a long time the Lord of those servants cometh, and reckoneth with them. Now we know, just, just for time's sake, we know, that the servant that was given the five talents, he made another five. We're going to see that here in a minute. The servant that was given the two talents, he got another two talents, total of four to give to the man. The servant that just had one didn't do anything with it. He buried it in the ground, and, and we're not going to cover him, but I want you to see these first two. In verse number 20, the Bible says, and so he that had received five talents, and that's a key word, he had received these five talents, came and brought other talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, and almost word for word the same thing, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. What I want you to notice here, two things. First of all, the Lord came and he gave these guys his talents. These were not talents that they had to come up with on their own. They belonged to the, to the master. When he comes back, one of them had ten talents to give to his Lord, and he heard, well done, thou good and faithful servant. The other one only had four. He didn't even quite have half of what the other guy had. But yet the Lord said the same thing to him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That all hinged on their abilities, and God knows our abilities, and God gave the talents. Now think with me, if you would, about, about this. You're not going to be rewarded for the amount of money that you give, but your faithfulness to give it. Some can give a lot of money. Some cannot give near as much, but you should be giving, okay? And so you're not going to be rewarded for the money. You're not going to be rewarded for the abilities that you have. I know some people, you might get a little discouraged and say, boy, if I had her abilities, then I could be faithful and I could do something for God. If I had his abilities, man, I would do something for God. I would give God my life. But you don't understand. It's not about the abilities. It's not about the song. You're not going to be rewarded for the song that you sang. Oh, man, you did a great job. Surely the angels in heaven are humming right along. Well, maybe, maybe not. But remember, it came from the Lord. The, 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 the talent came from the Lord. You're not rewarded for that sermon, that, that great sermon that you preach that, you know, will be recorded and, and, and go down in history, but your faithfulness to preach it. Look, if you would, at 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 
what am I saying? Well, I, I, hope, I, I hope you understand where I'm going, but I want you to consider this. It's not about who's the best. It's not about who can sing the loudest or who can preach the loudest or who can, you know, clean the church and, and you come in here and you got to wear sunglasses because things just sparkle. You know, it's not, about, it's not about that, but it's about your faithfulness to do it. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7, For who maketh thee to differ from another? Now listen, we're all different. But who made us different? Were you in the womb and you knew about Sean Weasler and you thought, yeah, I know how Sean looks. I don't want to look like Sean or I don't want to, whatever. I want to be taller than Sean. Or No, that, you had nothing to do with that. Who made thee to differ from another? And then he says, and what hast thou that thou dost not receive? What ability do you have that wasn't given to you? What do you have that you didn't receive? And then he says, now if thou didst receive it, if it was a gift, if it was given to you, why dost thou glory as if thou hast not received it? Listen, if you can preach a sermon, praise the Lord. He gave you the ability. If you can sing a song, praise the Lord. And I'm all about bettering yourself. I, I'm not saying you just do the minimum. If you can clean the church, praise the Lord. If God's given you any kind of ability, praise the Lord. But remember, it came from Him. And so don't get all lifted up with pride because I have this, this thing that I can do that people love to hear or see or smell or, or watch, and, and God surely must consider me a faithful person. It's not about the talent. That came from Him. It's about my faithfulness to use it. So we back up to verse number 2 of chapter 4, and we read these words, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found so what does God want of me? Does he want me to be more gifted? Hey, if, if he needs you to be more gifted, he'll gift you. Does he want me to be better looking? If he needs you to be better looking, he'll do something. He'll, he'll, he'll fix that. What does God want of me? What is required of me? That you be found faithful. That I be found faithful. That's all that God requires. I believe you should expand your gifts. I, I, I believe that. But the bottom line is, are you faithful? with what God's given you and given you to do. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. Our God is faithful. You know, we sure appreciate His faithfulness, but what about us? If He was as faithful as we're faithful, I'd be in trouble. Great is thy faithfulness. Listen, faithfulness is, is personified, it's identified, it's challenged, but it's also rewarded. So please, be faithful.